What's up YouTube? Welcome to Cars, Costs, and Technology. Today I'm going to be doing a full comprehensive buyer's guide for the C6 Corvette. For those of you that are new to the channel, I did have a 2005 C6 Corvette for a while. I actually sold it late last year, and when I think back on that experience, I feel like there's a few things I may have done a little differently had I done a little more research in advance to buying the car. So what I want to do is take some of the uh, miscellaneous piece of information that are scattered across the internet and compile them all together into one ultimate uh, buying guide or buyer's guide. That way those of you out there thinking about buying a C6 Corvette have all the information you need to decide which one will be best for you, how you want to configure your model. But if I do overlook any information or skip any questions, uh, definitely let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer that information for you. But let's jump in here. So the first thing I want to go over is how the uh, C6 Corvette uh, ranks or falls into line with the Corvette history or lineage. So there are seven total generations, obviously the C6 being the sixth. Um, the first is going to be the C1, starting production in 1953, going up to 1962. Then we've got the C2, or second generation Corvette, um, that being produced from 1963 to 1967. One of my favorite Corvettes, but it had a very short run at production, so that's unfortunate. Uh, the C3 is going to be the next as the third generation being produced between 1968 and 1982. Um, this is actually the longest produced Corvette, so it's interesting that those fall back to back. Um, the next is going to be the fourth generation C4 produced between 1984 and 1996. Uh, this is one of my least favorite, but you know it's still a Corvette, so it's got some, some value there for sure. Uh, the next is going to be the fifth generation or C5 produced between 1997 and 2004. Now if you're considering purchasing a C6, you've probably looked at the C5 as well. I would definitely steer you more towards the C6 just because the pricing is very comparable and it does have a lot more features. So the C6 was produced between 2005 and 2013. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the 7th generation or C7 Corvette um, that began production in 2014 all the way to the present day. Um, <clears throat> this is a really awesome car, but I know a lot of people are still interested in the C6 just for that better price point and you still get a really great performance. But um, like I mentioned, the longest production C, uh, Corvette was the C3 at about 15 years. The shortest um, lifespan of a Corvette in production was the C2 for five years between 1963 and 1967. Now, the reason that you'd pay attention to data like this is when you're buying something like a Corvette, you want to make sure that it's going to be relevant for a while. You know, it's a sports car, so performance numbers are, are most of what you're buying it for. But the average lifespan of a Corvette production looks like it's about 10 years based on all these models uh, averaged out. But I know with me, I accidentally jumped the gun, sold my C6 thinking that a C8 was coming out. Turns out it's probably just going to be a C7 ZR1 and the C will follow uh, sometime farther down the road so that was my mistake there but definitely check out my video where I discussed that topic now when we're looking at the very first model year of the C6 it's going to be the 2005 model year comes with the LS2 6 liter V8 uh, with 400 horsepower you got two different transmission options my particular Corvette was the four-speed auto transmission and that was probably my biggest complaint about that car um, it was a it was a great buy you know I mean you can get those for anywhere between mid 20s to high teens depending on the mileage and condition but that transmission was just very difficult to have fun with so in 2006 they made some improvements to the transmission and rolled out the six speed paddle shift automatic transmission i really wish that i would have done more research and went with that rather than going with you know just one year prior the four speed automatic transmission so um, if you're one of those few people out there looking for an automatic transmission corvette definitely look towards the 2006 or newer model years just because of that six speed um, paddle Paddle shift automatic. In 2006, they also released the C6 Z06. So this has got the uh, seven liter massive V8 with 505 horsepower, a lot of power, a lot of performance for the price. Um, it's got the LS7 in there. Now these started out uh, original MSRP around $65,000. Now you can actually pick these up for somewhere anywhere between 30 to 40,000, depending on the mileage, the year, and the condition. But really, really great value as well. If you've looked at those at all, um, I definitely encourage checking them out. Now in 2008, they made some changes to the the uh, basic or base model C6 with the standard engine. Uh, they went from the LS2 with 400 horsepower to the LS3 with 430 horsepower. So a uh, nice improvement there just on the standard numbers. They also added an auxiliary port um, for audio connection. Now you may be wondering why I would point that out when I'm mainly discussing large changes in model years. Um, with my Corvette, I really didn't like that I couldn't connect my phone to listen to music. Um, it might be a minor nuisance, but it was just annoying. So having that auxiliary port on 2008 or after, I think would be a huge plus. Now in 2009, they rolled out the um, C6 ZR1 with the huge LS9 uh, supercharged engine, creating that 638 horsepower. Now it's kind of funny to look at these numbers and think back at the 
reaction when this came out. Um, this was just hands down the, the most powerful Corvette ever created, most expensive as well. And, and it just seemed like there would never be anything to really top that. Well, um, now you can see the Z06 next to it in this video. They've actually you know bumped that up to 650 horsepower with a lower MSRP. So it's pretty incredible what they're doing with, with the new Z06s. But um, the ZR1 nonetheless is still an incredible car. Um, you can pick those up for pretty inexpensive now, right around $60,000. So for 600 plus horsepower is just insane. So in 2010, they released the C6 Grand Sport. Um, I've always thought this is a really good value proposition just because it's got um, the appearance and some of the, the handling dynamics of the Z06 or ZR1, but it's got the standard LS3 engine in it, so you got a little more tame engine. Um, the standard starting MSRP on one of these was um, about 55000 when it came out. Obviously, you can get them for much cheaper now, but definitely a good value there. Check out the Grand Sports. In 2012, they actually came out with the Centennial Edition package, and you could put that on all different Corvette models, so anywhere from the base all the way up to the ZR1, that package looks really really good too. It's um, mostly blacked out with some red accents, so definitely check that out. They're a little bit harder to find, probably going to have a higher uh, value to them, but really nice. Uh, in 2013, they came out with the 427 that had the LS7 7 liter V8 with 505 horsepower, very similar to the Z06, but this actually did come in uh, a convertible option. So a lot of people uh, wanted convertible on a Z06, but since it's more track oriented, they did not make a C6 with the uh, Z06 option and convertible. So 427 is pretty much the only option there, but that started out around a $76,000 MSRP. Um, I'm sure the value on those is probably going to go up down the road just because it's you know more of like a collector's item being the, the last year of the uh, C6 production. So next thing that I want to discuss with you guys is the different trim levels. So we went over the different years and what the different options and uh, upgrades and things were, but you still need to pick the right trim level for for the car that you want so you can see on the 2005 it had a different than all the rest of c6 uh trim uh naming scheme so um you can see starting in 2006 they switched over to the lt system which is actually the current naming scheme for the different trim tiers so um the base or 1lt 2lt 3lt 4lt and so on you know a, as you go up in the higher packages now i don't want to initially go over all of the specific features and the exact pricing for every year just because it would take way too long and i would recommend doing some individual research when you find the right model year that you're interested in but um, you do want to make sure you know what LT category the car that you're interested in falls into because obviously the higher the um, LT the more uh, luxury features or performance features it's going to come with um, and also the higher price you're going to end up paying for it so you may not want to pay for one of those higher uh, trim levels if you don't need those features or you may want to bump up your price range if you need some of those features like say a heads-up display or leather wrapped interior things like that so um, next I want to move on to some buying tips and what my goal here is just to help you guys out saving a little money on a c6 so first thing i want to talk about is um, mileage so when i have mileage matters here what i mean is the uh, the, the v8 engine in, in these c6 corvettes are known for reliability so you may actually be able to get a real steal if you find a c6 with some higher mileage that's going to have uh, a really low uh, sticker price on it just because the high mileage when it's probably going to last for years and years to come so that could be a really good buy if it's well maintained next thing i want to talk about is the amount of prior owners so normally with a daily driver if you were uh, looking at purchasing a used car you'd avoid a car with many owners you'd think there may be something wrong with it where with a sports car it's it's typically not that it just means that this is a car that most people get um, when they're in a certain phase of their life when things change like getting married having kids moving um, things like that sometimes it's a it's something that gets sold first just simply because it's of uh, the limited function in a, in a life situation like that so don't be completely deterred by too many owners you may be able to get a really great deal if it's been uh, sold many times but it doesn't always mean there's something wrong with it um, next thing I want to discuss is the seasonal demand. Now, there's some argument online whether or not there is a uh, appreciation or depreciation in Corvette pricing, depending on the season, but I think common sense would definitely lead us to know that, you know, in the summer, a, a Corvette is definitely going to be more valuable. You know, and the weather's nice, the roads are nice, um, you can take the top off. Uh, ride in warm conditions, it's going to be more valuable. So even if the pricing necessarily is, doesn't increase in the summer, um, there's going to be less people selling them in the summer just because they're getting use out of them at that time of the year. So if you're looking at buying, I would encourage looking more towards uh, you know winter or fall. Um, obviously, if you're trying to sell one, you're probably going to want to get it sold before summer. That way you don't uh, you know miss out on the largest uh, time to gain value. So but anyway, guys, I hope that all these all these uh, tips and uh, information has helped you out. If it has, give the video a like. Definitely check out some of the other content that I have on the C6 Corvette. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.